Hi, my name is Nikolai. Christina, Stefan and I are part of the Cisco Service Provider Innovation Team. During the next few minutes, we're going to talk about the Edge Cloud Automation and Observability. We find more and more use cases related to real-time applications. Every day, the number of connected devices increases. The Edge Cloud becomes the solution to these demands. The Edge is designed as a low latency, scalable and flexible service. We already see the first use cases. 5G open run, open caching, IoT, machine learning, etc. We will see many applications being moved to the cloud, but this new dynamic environment needs to be automated and observed. The edge is not just dynamic, it is hybrid as well. Applications would be running either on service providers edge cloud or on any public edge cloud. Currently, apps are running in the central data center. We will see some of them moved either on the edge, let's say the service provider edge premises or on any edge cloud. It really depends on the use case requirements. Now, let's take as an example the 5G open run and the 5G core. Network, network functions here are containerized or virtualized. We find a data plane deployed in the data centers near the radio unit. This could be the far edge or the edge data center. And thanks to this approach, we deliver low latency. Now, let's take a look at the control plane to support a higher number of connections. Scalability is what we are looking for. This property is offered by the central data centers or the public cloud. And that's where we find the control plane network functions running. Hi, my name is uh, Stefan Breifel, and like Nicola, I'm part of the service provider innovation team with a focus on uh, automation. Um, we developed a full automation stack to deploy um, the infrastructure needed for the uh, deployment of the Oran 5G use case, as well as the deployment of the different uh, add-ons uh, and uh, on top of this infrastructure and um, um, the deployment of the centralized unit control plane and user plane, as well as the distributed unit. Uh, the, the deployment of the infrastructure is done, uh, which is a Kubernetes cluster, is done using a Git repository, uh, which is monitored by a Terraform cloud. And Terraform uses uh, Cisco InterSight um, to deploy uh, the required uh, cluster. As soon as the cluster is, is deployed, uh, we use uh, Cisco NSO, um, which drives a ConfT uh, developed application to deploy uh, the necessary add-ons, as well as the CNFs from um, a local repository. Um, I will demo the second part of the automation because um, um, demoing the first part will require um, more time. As soon as the cluster is deployed and ready, uh, we push the, the necessary information regarding the, the Kubernetes cluster to NSO. Um, and I will use the demo UI. Uh, we can also use uh, directly the NSO UI uh, to, to push and, uh, and deploy the, the, the COCP um, on the just deployed cluster. So I will try to use um, a small template to make things a little bit um, quicker. Um, so basically the, the information we are, we are providing um, is pretty standard. So just um, the chart name, um, maybe the repository we are using and also eventually a namespace. I will make a, a short dry run to see what, what's happening behind. Um, so a part of the small service which gets configured, um, we also see that there is a device getting configured, which is at the end, a conf the application taking care of, of deploying the helm charts directly to the um, to the um, Kubernetes cluster. So as soon as I will um, start deploying and committing the information to NSO, I should see here a commit coming from um, from outside from from the northbound um, interface, and also at the same time we see here rolling all the ports. Um, coming from um, the COCP uh, application, which is deployed from a, let's say a local repository, which is uh, um, available around the cluster. The same way uh, we are deploying the COCP, we can also deploy the COUP, the, the VU, and also eventually um, other monitoring application we, we might need for, for uh, monitoring the cluster, monitoring the, the 5G uh, or uh, different aspects. 
My name is Christina Prekup and I work in the SP Innovation team with my colleagues. My work is mostly focused on observability. In terms of observability, part of the automation stack, we have both components deployed internally, so part of the inter-site cluster, as well as externally. It's possible to monitor the cluster using performance and fault metrics, as well as logs. And here we're going to demonstrate a subset of these with an external stack. InterSight allows for this kind of integration, but also for the installation of add-ons for both visualization and more importantly for collection of data. Let's check now what kind of services are running in our cluster. We can see that there will be two services for visualization of data. Then we have a set of services for collection of performance and fault metrics, and finally, a fluent bit service for collection of logs. Shifting our focus back up, we see a first dashboard. This dashboard is dedicated to performance monitoring of the cluster. It's going to give us a health perspective, a summary of the resource consumption of the cluster, as well as state of core Kubernetes components. Moving on to the second dashboard, we zoom in, this time on an actual open run CNF application. We look at this application by looking at its logs. We can filter down the logs based on the GNODB and let's say based on the, for example, control plane component of the application. Afterwards, we're going to be able to see historically what the application has been doing. We end here the overview of the automation and observability framework. Thanks to InterSight's flexibility, we have here a customizable solution, a solution suitable for cloud edge open run use cases.